All right, what's up? We're going to do the cheese wide receivers today. You know, with, with wide receivers, I usually don't have a ton of names on the cheese list, mostly because, look, if you pick the wrong running back high, it kills you. If you pick the wrong receiver high, it usually doesn't kill you as much because their production is inconsistent anyway. So if a wide receiver, he's less productive, but he still has four boom weeks that ended up helping you because if you're – you know, a real fantasy player, you play best ball and the wide receivers, it's a lot different than picking the wrong running back. So I usually don't have a ton of wide receivers, but I think there are a couple wide receivers that if you pick them too high, they can kill you. So we're going to go through them. This shouldn't take overly long. And then the only fans list will probably be longer just because there's, there's a shot that, you know, if you pick the right gem wide receiver that he really helps you so and there's a lot more candidates because teams carry multiple receivers so we're gonna split these up and we'll keep it moving and last but not least final promotion on this the matthew berry will come out or the matthew berry challenge will come out after this and then um that'll be all the fantasy videos but but one last reminder we kicked his ass last year bad so you can choose not to listen to me that is totally fine but uh, you're only hurting yourself. So let's get on it with it. Do the screen share. Hopefully we should be good to go. Name number one on the list is Calvin Ridley. And it wasn't like a terrible year for Ridley, but I I, I really thought more was coming for Ridley last year. I truly do. Over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns, but in 17 games, 76%. Like it wasn't anything sexy. Like I was hoping for this. And it just looks like this guy's gone, Ugh, unfortunately. Will he get 136 tar targets with Will Levis? Maybe. And they did pay him a lot of money. But now he enters age 30. He missed a whole year with the with the gambling stuff. He was hurt then before that year. Just based off of what we saw last year, I think we've seen the best of Ridley. And if we just go back to fantasy finishes, right? If we just go back to fantasy finishes from a year ago, he finishes wide receiver 17 and he played basically all the games. If you go to his average though, if we go to his average, he was at wide receiver 23. But that was with, again, that was with 136 targets. So he basically got the same number of targets but just way less efficient. His catch rate plummeted compared to, well, this, but this was a hurt season. Compared to when he was really, really fucking on it. His catch rate plummeted. He's got a clear quarterback downgrade. And this year, he was he was the guy. Like, Jack Jacksonville traded a second round pick. Like, he was supposed to be the guy in this offense. Good luck. With, good luck. Good luck doing that with Hop on the same team. Like th this guy not going anywhere. <laughs> like he just he's just gonna get his. And by the way, seven touchdowns, fourteen yards a catch. Hopkins is not the same guy, but he's gonna command his targets. At some point, I think you have to have a conversation with yourself. How many guys on Tennessee do I even want? That list for me can't be very high. <laughs> like that, that list for me certainly can't be very high. And if you just go to the rankings this year, again, it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to get Ridley. He's 33 on Fantasy Pros. He's 33 on Yahoo. Go to ESPN. 27 on ESPN. See, that's a, that's a lot. He's 36 on NBC, Matthew Barry. So maybe 36, I'm okay investing in him. I just think, uh, like, I'm not excited about the Titans. I'm just not excited about the Titans. I think he gets a clear quarterback downgrade. He's got to now deal with Hopkins. Like, it's one thing to deal with Christian Kirk. Because Christian Kirk's an underneath slot guy. You know, he'll get his looks. But it's Hop that really puts a damper on things. Like, when Levis is looking for a deep ball, he's going to air it out to Hop. And I'm not saying Ridley won't get his looks. But how many guys do you want on Tennessee? <laughs> I think you got to at least choose to, to not go for one of them. And for me, that would be, I'd rather play my, I'd rather at least if I'm trying to, I'd rather pick my poison with Hopkins over Ridley, who 
I think Ridley's declining, and I don't know. I, I would just be really nervous about Ridley, which is why I traded him in real life. Um, all right, Diggs. No, thank you. No, thank you. I am out on Stefan Diggs. A lot of reasons why. If you go back to his game log last year, which we did for the tight end video, there was a clear gap between his early season and his late season. And if you even watch the playoffs, he dropped that fucking wide open ball that would have won the Bills the playoff game over the Chiefs. I think he's totally lost a step. He had a lot of drops last year. I think he had 11 drops last year. I don't think that's on here, though. But his catch percentage during, like, during the second half, like it just went way down. So I'm out on Diggs. I think he's declined. Uh, there's a lot of mouths to feed in Houston here. You got Collins. You got Dell. I think in terms of fantasy, you have to pick one that you're not going for. And if you just look at the fantasy rankings, right, we'll share the fan for this one. I want to share the fantasy rankings. So if we go to the fantasy rankings, so you got Collins here at 13, you got Dell here at 26 and you got, um, Diggs here at, or Diggs here at 29. There's just no way all three are going to be inside the top 30. No, there's just no way all three are going to be inside the top 30. They're like, there's just too many mouths to feed. For as good as Stroud is, there's just there's just no way. Like, if you just go to fantasy finishes, like, okay, so here's a perfect here's a perfect example. Here's Hill, but where's Waddle? Where's Waddle? Where's Waddle? So Waddle finishes at 31. Where's Evans? Where's Mike Evans? Where's Mike Evans? Mike Evans finishes at four. And then you got um, you got Godwin at thirty two. Where's uh, where's another good example that we can use? Here's here we go. AJ Brown's at eight. And where's Devonte Smith? Where's Devonte Smith? Devonte Smith's at twenty two. Right? There's no fucking. Sorry, I think I was using the wrong screen share again. I'm losing my mind. Here's Tyreek Hill. Here's Jalen Waddle. We'll do that one more time. Here is Mike Evans. Here is um, Godwin. Here is AJ Brown. Here is Devontae Smith. Like, there's just no way. There's just no way one team is carrying three wide receivers. And nowhere on this list is that the case for any other team. Like, no, nowhere on this list do they have three guys inside the top 30. And that, that's the case for every list. So we got Collins at 17. They seem to be a lot more reasonable with it. Diggs at 27, Dell at 29. They're all inside the top 30, regardless of which list you look at. So if we go to ESPN, we got uh, Collins at 15, Diggs at 21, and Dell at 29. And then NBC, Matthew Bear, we got Collins at 11, Diggs at 22, Dell at 26. Like th this is this is this is the bottom line. Like th like this is the this is the bottom line. You're gonna have to pick one that you don't want. Like we're we're gonna have to pick one that isn't gonna be there because that's gonna happen. Like one of these guys is gonna left gonna get it left behind. Number one. This is a team that uses a fullback. This is the Kyle Shanahan offense. There's going to be a fullback on the field a lot of the time. And they brought in Mixon because they want to run the ball better. Last year, they, they ranked 30th in rushing yards per game. Number two, you're just you're just not getting all three of these guys inside the top 30. Like, there's just no way. And if I were to pick one, I think Diggs is declining. The first half of the year was a different guy than the second half of the year. And number two... And I, I was lower on this player than I, maybe I should have been, but it looks like CJ Stroud loves Tank Dell. Like Tank Dell is from Houston. He they they were drafted in the same draft class. Like it looks like like Stroud really likes Tank Dell, and Collins is the best receiver on their team. So I would leave Diggs out of it. And if we just go to Diggs, like 11-1 to catch. 
That's his worst mark since 2018. This 11 yards per catch is his worst mark in 2018. Like, this guy right here is never coming back to 17 yards a catch, and this guy right here is definitely never coming back, and you're not getting 1,400 yards out of him. So, I'll take the under on every fucking Diggs prop that I can get. Every prop that I can get for Diggs is under. I'll, I'll take the under. Next guy on the list, Drake London, who sucks, and this is the easiest one of all, and I can't, I can't understand it. I, I, I just, I can't understand it. I can't I can't understand it. And and if we if we just go back to fantasy finishes last year, if we just go back to fantasy finishes last year, by the way, Drake London, who played in every game except one. He played in every game except one. He averaged 6.6 .6 fantasy points per game. He stinks. Like if you watch football, he's not good. I don't I don't know who needs to hear this. He's not a good football player. He averaged 6.6 .6 fantasy points per game last year. He was a top 10 pick. Should have never been a top 10 pick. Uh, if we just if we just go back to his numbers, if we just go back to his raw numbers, uh, he had 905 yards last year, two touchdowns. The year before, 866 yards, four touchdowns. There's no evidence to suggest he's a good football player. And by the way, if we just go to literally like Jahan Dotson, who the commanders traded for a pick swap, Jahan Dotson has 11 career touchdowns. But this motherfucker can't find the end zone. And you're going to tell me he's a top 10 receiver. No. No. <laughs> no. I, I, again, let's go back to it. Fantasy finishes last year. Drake London, wide receiver 41. Tied with Cooper Cup, who missed one, two, three, four, five games. So Cup missed five games, and right below him, one, two, three, four, five. Deontay Johnson missed five games. That that's where he's he slotted in as. He finished he finished behind Shahid, Dobbs, Tank Dell missed one, two, three, four, five games, and, and finished way ahead of him. Garrett, and don't tell me don't tell me he had a bad quarterback because Garrett Wilson, Garrett Wilson had a bad quarterback too. And he finished ahead of him. Again, the, the, the ranking on Drake London is asinine. If Drake London, if the Falcons weren't brain dead, like he's he's not ranked as high. If, if he's picked in the third round, he's not ranked as high, which he should have been picked in like the fourth round, which is where I had him ranked coming out of college. This is, this is a joke. <laughs> okay, so Fantasy Pros has him as wide receiver 14. And by the way, He's been trending downward in the rankings. Uh, if we go to Yahoo. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. Yahoo, he's a top 10 wide receiver. No, no chance that's happening. Just, just none. No, no chance. Um, ESPN, by the way. Wow, 14. Okay. And then... Um, Matthew Barry has him as wide receiver 10. That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> like, like, let's just compare his numbers to Pickens, by the way. Who, Pickens is way better than him. Like, Pickens is way better than him. He's at 13 yards a catch. Pickens is at 18 yards a catch. And way better numbers with Kenny Pickett throwing him the ball. Like this isn't even arguable. The numbers don't lie. You can make you can make a lot of numbers lie. These ones don't lie. And not only that, like Pickens in terms of high school recruiting was up here, and Drake London's down here. Uh, it, it, you can ask any high school talent evaluator in the country. Nobody with a fucking brain says that Pickens is worse than this guy. Nobody. So, um, I don't know what crack you're smoking. Uh, I don't know what drugs you're taking. Please stop pretending that this is a good football player. Like how many times are we, I hope this is the last time that we have to go through this exercise, but I will bet my life that this guy's not a top 10 wide receiver because there's no chance. There's no world where he's a top 10 wide receiver. None. Okay. He's got cousins now. Wonderful. Congratulations that he's got cousins now. Congratulations. That doesn't fix the fucking problem that he still stinks. 
Like, what world? What, what are we talking about here? This is top 10 wide receiver? Like, do you understand how much better he has to get to be a top 10 wide receiver? <laughs> Let's just go back to last year. So where he's being ranked, last year, Ayuk was the 10th best wide receiver, which actually leads to my next point. So why don't we go there? So last year, Ayuk was the 10th best wide receiver. London needs to get 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns, roughly, to be wide receiver 10. No chance. You, you think this guy's get 1,300 yards in him? No. There's no scenario where that's happening. He's not even good. He scored two touchdowns last year. Anyway, moving on. I, I, I can't I can't even believe this shit. Um, all right. Next. Yeah, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, I just think he's a bum and a piece of shit. And really, he had one outlier year, and that's never gonna happen again. Um, if we just go to Ayuk, his nut this number is gonna be a, proved to be a total outlier. I could see him coming back down to this. I could even see him coming back down to this. But this is the craziest part about it. He's not practicing. Today is Monday, August 20, 26th. Maybe things could change by the time I get this posted to YouTube. As of right now, he's still not practicing. Is there going to be a holdout during the year? Does this, this is linger into the regular season? Is he going to show up without a contract extension? Is a trade on the table to where if he does get traded... Well, it's going to take him three, four weeks to get up to speed on the new playbook. So now I'm losing, like, I'm, I'm out. I'm, I'm all good. Like, Fantasy Pros has him as wide receiver 12. Uh, Yahoo has him as wide receiver 14. And then Matthew Barry has him as wide receiver 17, which clearly moved him down with all this nonsense going on. I, I'm all good. Like, you can find receivers. Like, it's just really not hard to find receivers. Like, if you just go back to where he's being ranked around, okay, I can have Marvin Harrison Jr. I can have Mike Evans. I can have Debo Samuel. I can have Nico Collins. I can have DK Metcalf. I can have Devontae Adams. I can have DJ Moore. I can have Cooper Cup. Like, I can have Amari Cooper. There's just too many. Like, I could I could take the shot on Malik Neighbors. Like, there's just too many receivers. There's just too many receivers to put up with this knucklehead and he's an asshole. So I'm not doing it. You can go ahead and do it. But I, I, I'm just, I'm not. I'm, I'm just not. Last on the list for cheese, Nakua. I hate to do this, um, but it, 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 it just is what it is. Um, this is the bottom line. So with Nakua, record-breaking season. Record-breaking season. It's more of a twofold problem with Nakua. Number one is where he's being ranked, and that's as pick. It's a wide receiver eight. It's just it's just a lot, man. Wide receiver eight, uh, and then we got uh, wide receiver eight. Like the, the these fantasy rankers, they have no fucking idea what to do. They just they just don't have any idea what to do here with Nakua. So. They all just put him at wide receiver eight and follow the politics. I can't do that. Like, this just, it's a big price, man. <laughs> it's a big price. And I know he was just a rookie last year and it was a record breaking season. And by the way, this is coming from me, which, if you just go to vendettasportsmedia.com, um, there was no bigger website out there that advocated for Nakua. It's just a fact. Whether it be what I did, which was, Hey, I, from the shit that I saw at the Senior Bowl, I liked him. Like, we liked him. But Garrett was on the field at the Senior Bowl, and he liked him so much, he gave him a second-round grade, which nobody else had besides for the Vendetta draft team. So that's coming from us. Oh, it's going to be tough to repeat, man. This is the biggest problem I have with it. So if you go to the game logs, and if you just do a side-by-side -side comparison... There was a clear gap when Cup was on the field and when Cup wasn't on the field. So, all right, let's go to, there's Nakua's numbers. Can I just pull up Cooper Cup? Please work with me. Can I, please work with me. All right, 
because Cup was hurt last year. And if Cup's hurt again, okay, yeah, you know what? If Cup's hurt again, maybe Nakua can get there. But all indications are that Cup should be ready to go and that... But if, if you just... We'll share this one instead. So, okay, look at it. To end the season. Let's do week 13, 14, 15. Around here, there's 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 cup numbers right here. 13, 14, 15. When he first came back, weeks 5, 6, right? If you just compare those. Here's a, here's a week with cup. Week 5 and 6, cup went off. Now, Nakua... Like, but look at look at here. Without cup, these were non-cup weeks. This this is the guy that that cranked it. 20 targets. Like this is the guy that cranked it up. Weeks, you know, these weeks right here. I just think there's gonna be a big gap. The weeks that cup was there and the weeks that cup wasn't there. I'd be very nervous. I'd be very nervous. And by the way, like, look, you have to spend an arm and a fucking leg for this guy. Like, if you just go to the rankings. Like if I want Nakua, I'm I gotta pass on AJ Brown. I gotta pass on St. Brown. I gotta pass on Garrett Wilson, passing on Debo, Mike Evans, Marvin Harrison. It's just a lot, man. It's just a lot. Like I'd, I'd feel way better. I'd feel way better about it if he was wide receiver 15. Wide receiver 16, 17, 18, 19. Like wide receiver eight. I gotta spend eight. So he was wide receiver five last year, but it was a full healthy season and cut missed a lot of time. I don't know. I just, that, that seems really high. And, uh, he was a fifth round pick last year, which goes back to my point for why you need to constantly trick your brain. If I had access to the 2024 fantasy list last year and it said Nakua was going to be wide receiver eight for this year, I would know to pick him, right? You have to trick your brain. If I'm looking at that 2025 fantasy list, which doesn't exist right now, but if I'm just conjuring it up in my mind, I don't see Nakua being ranked inside the top 10 again. And I, I like the guy a lot. I, we were big fans. Go research it on your own. We were big fans. Man, that's a lot. That's a lot to pay. It's a lot to pay. And, and I'm just not willing to go that high. That's the cheese list. Uh, we'll do the OnlyFans list, and that will close out the wide receivers. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll be back with that video next.